everybody, welcome to Chapel Mill. I have my mask on. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Cut. These are in the bloopers. <laughs> yes, we need bloopers. Hey, everybody, welcome to Chapel Middle School at home. So glad you could make it today. I want to introduce you to my friend Ron Chapman. Ron's one of our small group leaders at the Port Clinton campus. He is amazing. Ron, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, Ken, um, I'm married to my lovely wife, Angie. She's, we've been married for, I hope I get this right, 25 years? Something like that. Uh, we have three kids, four dogs, and a cat, and lots of chickens. <laughs> you wouldn't know this about Ron, but Ron is an Ohio State champion wrestler. 1994. Six. 1996. <laughs> and he's awesome. So we're gonna wrestle for you right now. Let's go. <laughs> If any of my wrestlers are watching, that's not the proper stance. <laughs> hey, everything we do here at the chapel, whether it is uh, doing games, doing events, doing this, or wrestling run, is to help you move one step closer to God and each other through Jesus Christ. Hey, don't we have a baptism coming up? Oh, that's right. Thank you so oh, much, Ron. We have a baptism, yeah, we have a baptism class coming up the first week of February, yeah. so February 7th. And if you have never been baptized, or if you have questions about baptism, or you just like to know more, uh, man, will you please let us know? Send me an email at ken at the chapel dot family, and let me know that you are interested in being baptized. And then on February 7th, you'll come to whatever campus you usually attend. It goes for one hour, and uh, you need to have a parent with you. And we'll talk about baptism, and then uh, there you go. That'll be it. So that's on Sunday, February 7th, at whatever campus you attend normally. And then just send me, again, send me an email, and let me know that you're interested, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, I think that's it. We're ready to jump into Whoa, your message. No, Ken. Don't we usually play a game here? Oh, that's right, that's right. You can't do the message without the game. That's right, yeah, yeah. no message without the game. It's time for the Chapel Middle School Game of the, the Week. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Chapel Middle School Game of the Week. Ron had to go home. Sorry, Ronnie boy. <laughs> So it's just me with our game today is called children's book emoji challenge children's book emoji challenge all right now I have not I have not seen any of these so today you are playing against me no timer just whoever gets it first and I guarantee you I'm gonna win so you have to be honest if you win or not in your comments because I can't I can't tell, right? So I guess whoever's in the room is playing all against me. You guys, all of you, versus me. We'll see how well you do. If you beat me, I want to know about it. If you lose, I want to know about that too. So <laughs> put a comment down uh, in the comment section and let me know how well you did. All right, children's book emoji challenge. This is going to be, I'm sure, similar to the other ones. I bet there'll be emojis and we'll have to figure out what the children's book is from the emojis. Now I will admit, I have seen two of these. So, I will give you both of those. So already, you're up by two. So that's pretty good. I think there's only 10, so we'll see. All right, you ready for the first one? I, is that really one? That's totally blank. <laughs> Oh, funny. All right, you ready for the first one? Here we go. Green square eggs, green eggs and ham. Boom! Did you beat me? Probably not. Oh. I guess it's not gonna have the answers. What if, oh. what if there's one we don't know? I don't know, all right. Well, obviously, Charlotte's Web, right? All right, this one, do you know it? This is the only other one that I've seen. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Dr. Seuss, you certainly have that book. Somewhere in your house, you have it. 
All right, you ready? Now we're for realsies. Here we go. Cat in the hat. Bull! Cat in the hat. That was quick. All right, here we go. Next one. Oh, these are too easy. I'll give you this one. Certainly, you know, by now the three little pigs, right? Okay. Oh, another easy one. Sometimes these games are really hit and miss. Sometimes they're really easy. Sometimes they're really hard. I keep getting the easy ones. So hopefully you know this one. Little Red Riding Hood. All right, I know what this one is. Willy Wonka, The Chocolate Factory. I think it's if you give a mouse a cookie. That's my guess. If you give a mouse a cookie. All right. Oh, this is the other one I saw. Girl goes in a hole. There's a rabbit. The guy with a top hat with T. Queen of Hearts. I don't know what a worm. What does a worm have to do with anything? I don't know if we're tied or not. Here we go. Oh, that's cute. Maybe if you have like little kids in the room, maybe they'll really enjoy this game. You? Probably not. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> the Hungry Little Caterpillar. All right. Nice job. And the tiebreaker. The tiebreaker? Here we go. Let's say we're going to tie. Here we go. Oh, what is this called? Oh, dang it, you're gonna win. This is for all the points. It's the one where the kid, he dreams, he goes to Monster Island, he becomes a monster, and then he flies home. What is the name of that book? I don't even know. Dang it! I promise next week we have a brand new series coming. I promise a much better game. I think that's the worst game we've ever played on this. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe this one. I, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> let's kill this and let's get to Ron. Let's pray for Ron uh, before his message. God, thank you for Ron Chapman and for uh, the message he has prepared to finish off our series on moods. Thank you. Thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus. And that, Jesus, that you were a middle schooler and you experienced all of these emotions. You're not no stranger to them. Not only did you create us, but you know what it's like to be part of creation. And that is awesome. So encouraging. Thank you so much for that. Speak through Ron. Open up our hearts. Open up our minds to hear your word. We love you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Chapman from the Port Clinton campus. Today I'd like to ask you a question. What would you do if you could get away with anything? And what would that look like? Would it be maybe sneaking out of the house in the middle of the night to hang with your friends? Or maybe something just as simple as, oh, I don't know, maybe eating dessert before you eat your main meal. Maybe you would want to hack into your teacher's computer and give yourself all A's. Maybe you'd like to spend all your parents' money on buying your own cell phone. Or 
playing video games all night long. When I was younger, my brother and I were really big Star Wars fans. And one of the huge things in Star Wars was the Millennium Falcon. And my brother and I, we really wanted to have our own Millennium Falcon. So we got together and we went over to the neighbor's ice shanty. Now, an ice shanty is something that they use out for ice fishing to stay warm. Well, it didn't look much like a, a Millennium Falcon. So what really got the attention of my dad and my neighbor is the great big hole that my brother and I chopped in the top of the ice shanty because every Millennium Falcon has to have a gun turret on the top. So when my dad found out about this, he told my brother to go out and I to go out and break a switch off of the willow tree out front. Now my brother and I were so excited because not only did we just get to chop a big hole in the neighbor's ice shanty, now we get to break the tree out front. Well, little did we know that that switch or that branch that my dad had us break off was gonna be used to punish us. I think what my dad really wanted to tell us was it's not okay to destroy other people's property. So maybe you guys have been punished. Maybe not quite as bad as what the way I was punished, but maybe you were punished for something that you've done. And we've all started to feel that guilt. Now, there's two types of guilt. The first guilt we're gonna talk about is false guilt. False guilt could be anything to where you don't have control over what is causing the guilt. Maybe it's something like you got an A on the test and your best friend didn't do so well. And you feel guilty for them not doing so well. Or maybe they've lost a loved one and you haven't lost a loved one and you feel guilty that your loved ones are still around and theirs aren't. And then there's the real guilt. Well, let's be honest, maybe it's real guilt because we really did something to be guilty for. Maybe it was that you cheated on that test to get that A and your best friend really studied hard and they didn't do so well. Now, some of us, we don't know what to do with that guilt that we feel. And there's a couple of things that we tend to do. Some of us try to ignore it. And when we try to ignore the guilt, sometimes that gives that guilt enough time to grow and into other things. And it allows us to continue to make the same mistakes over and over. And then there's others of us who don't feel that we even feel guilt to where we do something and we either get caught and we get punished or we don't get caught and we don't get punished, but then it's over and done with and we never look back at it. A lot of times when we experience guilt, that is telling us that something is off and that something is not right. The feeling of guilt is not always a bad thing because it is there to tell us that we've done something wrong and that we may need to go back and fix something. I always tell my coworkers, my friends, my family that if I'm doing something wrong, you gotta tell me because if I don't know that I'm doing it wrong, I can't fix the situation. And that's what guilt does for us. Guilt allows us to have that feeling that something is off. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some scripture in the Bible that talks about guilt and how we can deal with it. And we're gonna start by introducing you to a guy by the name of Paul. Now, just so that we can do a little background on Paul, Paul was not always called Paul. Before Paul was Paul, he was Saul. Did you get all that? When Paul was Saul, Saul did so many different things in his life that he had so much guilt. Some of the things that Saul did before he was Paul would probably make your head spin. But that's what makes it so much more important of what he says in the scripture. 
And here's what Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. All right, so let's break this down. In the beginning of the verse, he tells us that there is no condemnation if you are with Jesus Christ. What all that's saying is that the guilt is, there's no guilt too heavy that Jesus hasn't been able to set us free from. Jesus gave us the power of his spirit. And by Jesus coming to the cross and coming down here on earth to be with us and to go onto the cross and forgive us of all of our sins, he has taken all of that guilt that we feel when we do something wrong and he's washed them away. By him doing that, Jesus has come down and given us that chance to start over, to allow guilt not to be the boss of us and not to take control of us. So there's a few things, a few steps that we can do to help us with feeling that guilt and allowing that guilt to be put at the, at the feet of Jesus. And the first one is, don't be so hard on yourself. You can't, because Jesus come down and he, he forgives us of our sins, we need to be able to believe in him and believe that he will help us and take that guilt and that burden of guilt and allow us to wash it away clean. And the second step is that we shouldn't be so hard on other people because just as Jesus came down for us and took away our sins, we need to be thinking of what Jesus did for other people. So not being so hard on people who you look at and you say, well, they should feel really guilty about what they're doing. Maybe we should just give them that second chance that Jesus come down and gave us. The third thing here is that we should allow guilt and remind us and be a reminder of what we've done wrong, but then go back and correct what we've done wrong and face that head on. And the fourth thing is to go and correct it and fix those mistakes, no matter what it may be. And just as we've said before, guilt doesn't have to be the boss of us. We can't let guilt determine the choices that we make for the rest of our lives. So as we move into the small group, I just wanna ask one question. So what's one thing I usually do when I feel guilty about something. What's one thing I usually do when I feel guilty about something?